Welcome to an episode of the Zealous Podcast. I'm your host, Rocky Snyder. This week, I've got Chase Coe in the house with me. I met this guy at the Orlando Perform Better Summit, and we just started talking the same language, all about mental preparation and achieving your goals. And he's got a system that he's lined up that he's going to explain a little bit of this step-by-step process of what he does with his Olympic athletes and to everyone else that works with him. But before we get underway, don't forget, we've got continuing education online on my website, rockysnyder.com, as well as in-person events coming up. For instance, November 3rd in Capitola, California, I'll be leading a course or a workshop in posture-based soft tissue mobilization. So how to bring the body back into a more balanced state, one, by understanding where they are, where the structure is, or where their foot pressure is, and to better target foam rolling areas. And before we get underway also, we've got Satanta College to talk about. This is a place you can go for your master's degree, and master's of science in applied sports biomechanics and movement science. They've got a tract for applied sport and exercise psychology, as well as sports injuries and return to performance and performance coaching. Just go to satantacollege.com, enter the code RS10 for 10% off your tuition today. Follow us on Instagram at Rocky underscore Snyder. Click the subscribe button, and here we go. Chase, welcome to Zealous Podcast, first of all. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Man, and well, it was my pleasure meeting you earlier this year in Orlando and setting aside some time and chatting about the mental aspects of sports and performance because it is, it's, it's a, I think it's on the front edge or becoming like a, a little wave that's, that's forming and crashing over most athletic pursuits but you've been doing it for a while how about this yeah how about giving us a little background about yourself and who you are and how you began following this path that you're on okay yeah great um well for me it began uh really my senior year in college um i was getting my degree in kinesiology and uh i knew i wanted to work with athletes um i was uh you know going there for obviously those reasons specifically um, one evening when I was uh, at school, I saw a speaker come on TV and uh, they mentioned writing down everything that you want to be when you, so to speak, grow up or just in your lifetime, really, not not necessarily grow up, but in your lifetime. And that resonated with me. Uh, so I wrote down uh, that night 42 things that I wanted to be in my life. And, and 42 doesn't mean anything. That just happened to be what it was. Uh, and I wrote down big things. I wrote down that I wanted to work with Olympic uh, sprinters. I wrote down that I want to be, you know, um, good at what I do in the industry uh, for strength and conditioning. I wrote down, uh, you know, things like I wanted to get married one day. I wrote down that I wanted to own my own facility one day, you know, things like that, right? Big, big item things. And uh, I wrote them all down and then I forgot about it, right? And then a few months later, I was required to do um, an internship, like a lot of degrees back then required, 480 hours. And I was like, okay, this is a great launching pad for me uh, to reach these dreams. Um, So this was in uh, 2006. So I I look at my list and I'm like, well, if I want to work with Olympic sprinters, I should go to the Olympic training centers, right? That's what my brain was telling me. Uh, So I looked up Colorado Springs, Lake Placid, right? And uh, uh, Chula Vista. Um, And so I sent my my, um, resumes into all those uh, and all of them said no. They said, we only accept graduate students. Uh, at that time. I don't know if that's still true, but back then, back in 2006, that's what they said. So I got Mm -hmm. turned down. uh, So I Googled um, trainer of the year because I'm like, okay, well, if I want to be, you know, good in the industry, I want to learn from the best. And back then in uh, 2006, um, Idea had uh, Todd Durkin. I'm sure a lot of your listeners probably know Todd Durkin. Uh, He popped up as trainer of the year in 2006. So I call his facility uh, in San Diego, Fitness Quest 10. And I said, hey, can I come down there and and intern? Uh, and they said, oh, no, we're sorry. We don't accept interns at this time. So I'm like, okay, there's another, you know, there's another no. Uh, and I look at my list and I didn't really have anything resonate that fits. But I did uh, know the importance of being around like-minded people. And I saw uh, in Men's Fitness Magazine, uh, a gym called the Lord's Gym. And that resonates with me. So I called them up there in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I was in Tulsa at the time, uh, okay. but I called them up in actually Claremont, Florida, outside of Orlando. I called them up, say, hey, you know, can I do an internship there? They said, sure, come on down, right? 
So I come down to Florida and uh, I get there and uh, I get 480 hours of learning how to make smoothies and clean equipment, right? <laughs> so nice. I, didn't, I didn't really, it was, it was an open in the gym when no one else wanted to at 5 a.m., right? Uh, so I got, I got three months of that and I was in a little bit of a like, okay, this was supposed to be my launching pad. Um, I had this big list. I had these big dreams. I, I graduated outstanding student of the year. I worked, I worked for that, right? Like I felt like I put in the time and I was a little bit disappointed, right? Uh, but I was in a seven month lease across the street in some apartments. And uh, so I, I was going to fulfill that lease and finish out my time there. So I said, okay, I'm going to get busy with some clients and, uh, you know, start training. Uh, so during that time, things started to happen though. Okay. During that time, uh, one of the ladies in the um, child care department caught my eye, right? Uh, later became my wife. So that's on that list, right? And then, nice. yeah. And then when we were there, we were watching um, the 2007 uh, World Championships uh, in Tokyo. Uh, okay. And, and that year, it happened to be Tyson Gay who won the 100 meters and the 200 meters and became a double world champion. While I was sitting on the couch, uh, watching that my my girlfriend at the time not my wife we were watching it and i looked at the tv and i kid you not i said i want to train that guy and i pointed at the screen and i looked over at her and i said that's who i want to train and it was very clear very precise right and then that was the end of it it was just me watching that and me making that statement that bold statement so that was in august uh, when the world championships were two months later november I'm at the gym, you know, uh, doing my, well, actually too much. I'm at the house, but I'm still working at the gym. I get a phone call. It was a Sunday night. I get a phone call. Hey, there's someone here uh, that's wanting um, training for track. They're wanting to get faster. I said, okay, that's great. My mind says it's some probably high school athlete. You know, I don't have any athletes yet. I don't have <sighs> any. I'm all gym pop right now. So I wasn't known for this. You know, no, there's no reason for someone to come in looking for me uh, for that. Um, but I said, okay, great. Put them in at 7 a.m. I have 7 a.m. open. So I get in the next morning, come in, open up my book, and the name Tyson Gay is written in my book. That's crazy. Crazy. Two months later, Tyson Gay is written in my book. I look at the front desk person. I said, do you know who this is? And they're like, no. I said, Google it. Look it up. His picture pops up. I had a client at 6 before that. 7 o'clock, though, here he comes walking in, and uh, and there he was. Um and so then after that, I, uh, you know, I met with them, explained what I do. Um, they flew me out to LA. I met with his agents, um, talked to them. They pushed a calendar in front of me and said the Olympics are this year, meaning I'm only 20 years old. I'm sure his agents were a little bit like, what's Tyson doing? Uh, you're already a two-time world champion and you're pulling up a strength coach you've never met before or heard of. Uh, but I explained my periodization and what I was playing was, and they let me work with him. And we broke the American record a couple times that year. Uh, That's phenomenal. And yeah. okay, before you go any further, yeah. I got the, the number of, of items on your list was 42. Is that correct? 42. Okay. Now, I don't know if you are a Doug Adams fan, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or not, but the, the whole thing is like, what is the meaning of life? And at the end, you learn that the secret of life is 42. So uh, it's just a little side note. When you said wow. 42, I'm like, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You may not even wow. be aware. But there you go. You've got the meaning I, of I life, 42. So, okay. So, Tyson, what was it? Uh, you said something about your periodized program. But being a two-time world champ, 100, 200, and you being 22 years old, there was something else there. It More was. than just that. What? You know, and I don't want to sidetrack you with, with with your story, but I'm just curious. Like, what was that all about? Um, well, there's certain, and and that's where I want the listener to hear the the concept of there's certain laws and there's certain principles, and there's certain things in the universe that um, deal with mindset, that deal with uh, scripture, laws, everything. You you name it. When they happen. Uh, things like this happen. Uh, there's no such thing as chance. Um, there's no mm -hmm. such thing as coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidence. Um, I've had the privilege of uh, helping 30 different athletes medal at the Worlds or the Olympics from six different sports. And I can with certainty tell you 
that when you follow the laws and the principles that we're actually taught about, we just don't use, uh, you get your, you get your, you get your dreams. And, okay. And so that is a, that's going to be a foreshadow right now. That's we're going to delve into that a little bit later. So, okay. Yeah. That's good to know. There's some laws that came into effect there that you harnessed and, and used to your, your benefit and ability to help others. So, okay. Continue your storyline yeah. though, and we'll get to the laws. We will. So at this time, I did not know those laws. I was performing them. So there's, so there's three, I, I call it, there's three types of people, right? There's the type of person uh, that gets what they want, not knowing that they're performing these principles and laws. There's okay. a type of person that gets what they want, knowing that they're performing these principles and laws, which is super powerful, which is what mm -hmm. I do for the athletes now that I've learned it. And there's the type of person that never gets what they want and they don't know why. Uh -huh. Because they're not following them properly. Right. So, so that's, I was the type of person at this time, uh, getting what I wanted, not knowing how I was getting it. And it took me about 10 years to actually learn. So I've been a strength coach for 20 now, but at the first 10, it took me, I had to work this backwards over and over again, uh, breaking it down as to why did this happen? And, and then is it duplicable? And it is duplicable. I can tell you right now with certainty, it's duplicable. Uh, but to can you continue the story? So I saw Todd Durkin up at uh, Providence, Rhode Island at a perform better. Uh, a couple uh -huh. months after, a couple months after I met Tyson, talked to him. He goes, actually, we're just starting a mastermind. And this was when he was just starting it. And he limited it to 30 people. And he had two spots left. He said, go ahead and apply. I did. Uh, I learned from him from over a decade uh, on some things, which was uh, huge. I learned more from that and calls with him than I would have if I interned for three months. Right. So that one got checked off the box. And then just my last example that I shared with you, uh, the one to own a facility, the facility I was at actually got sold the new owner ran it to the ground for nine months and it was losing thousands of dollars. So the owner of the building literally handed me the gym. All I had to do was take over the lease. I didn't have to purchase any of the equipment, which was hundreds of thousands of dollars. I didn't, I had to take over the lease. I was a walk-in. So wow. uh, everything I wrote down that I thought was going to take me a lifetime, I had all 42 things accomplished, including one of the things was being a dad, that kind of thing. So that one pushed a little longer, but everything, all 42 things was completed in six years. And I thought these were lifetime goals. It was amazing. It was phenomenal. Uh, and, and I was like, okay. And that's when I asked the question, how does this happen? How did this happen? Mm. And then that's when I started dissecting it. And I honestly believe uh, we have it figured out now. And it's amazing. Well, yeah. I think I'm in the first category where things are coming, but uh, I don't understand. Yeah. So, so yes. Help me understand. Okay. So, well, there's, there's, I, I call it the goat, the goat mind, meaning the greatest of all time mind. And what it is, is with the athletes, um, I broke it into seven pillars for them, but it's 33 lessons. And um, each lesson builds upon the previous lesson. Uh, but to give you um, a few of them today, just a, a, a synopsis, so you can get the idea of how this goes. Um, well, the first lesson was that I just shared with you is the power of writing. Okay. Uh, so that, remember, I wrote down, I listed 42 things. That's one of the lessons you, you have, well, number one, you, you need to know what you want. A lot of people don't even know that. Okay. So you need to know what you want. A lot of people are just drifting through, not taking the time to figure out what they want. Uh, but step one, figure out what you want. And we have three ways of doing that um, because there's three different levels. Uh, but figure out what you want, and then you write it down. And we know from meta-analysis that 2% of the U.S. population, 2%, write it down. 80%, 80 percent, it's crazy, get what they want when they write it down. So mm -hmm. of those 2%, 80% get it. So of the 33, of the 33 rules and principles and laws that I've come to find out, you knocked out 80% of it just by doing that. So then we, wow. the, the other, the other 32 give you the other 20%. So we're sure that we get what we want. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but that's the first step. A lot of people don't write it down 2%. So uh, you've, you've kind of alluded to the fact that uh, there's your, your belief system helps guide you too. And, yes. and uh, so there's the, the mental, emotional, physical, but spiritual component too. How does that come into play? If you don't mind me prying. Sure, sure. Well, it's all so every lesson um, is backed by three things. It's backed by scripture, because I believe we're told about these laws through scripture, uh, num no, very clearly. Uh, number two, 
they show how the laws of the universe, basically law of vibration, attraction, correspondence, right? Polarity, um, how those actually work. So we're told about it with the scripture, the laws make it work. And then I have science with each of those that prove that it works. So, so all three things, whether you believe one or the other or not the other, it doesn't really matter. They all say the same thing, but one tells us, one does it, one proves it. Uh, but they all say the same thing. Uh, so it's, it's quite phenomenal. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. The, the question in my mind right now, you, you checked off 42 in six years. What's the next 42? Have you created another list? And what, oh, yeah. are, what are some of the things on your list? Uh, well, my big one, to be honest, is getting this out to, to people now. I've used it uh, for 20 years with kind of my own little circle. Um, one of my big listers now is is being on here with you, to be honest. Um, I want I want more people to understand this now and benefit from it. Uh, that's a big one. That's a real big one. So anecdotally, can you give us some, some background, some stories, not necessarily m naming names or anything, but some of the athletes that you've worked with, the successes that you've had, the, and as also the obstacles that you come across when doing this work? Um, I'll go into another lesson to answer that a little bit. Um, one of the first things we deal with, with, with athletes, as far as an obstacle is perception. Um, I have a, one of the lessons is titled everything just is. And before we get into all the laws and how everything works, a person needs to understand that everything just is there. Your perception is uh meta-analysis tells us your perception is wrong 50% of the time. So 50% of the time of what you believe is true is wrong. <laughs> so, so, um, Step one, it's not actually step one. This is in pillar one, but it's not step one. It's step three or four. But um, one of the important things to learn is that your perception is probably wrong. And when you can come to grips with that, then I can shape and mold your belief system. So when an athlete comes in, um, we talk about perception, meaning um, your perception, let me go into this a little bit. Your perception would say something's big, something's a lot, something's little, something's small, something's hard, something's easy, right? That's your perception. Um, most of the time it's wrong. So, um, I had a golfer at the Paris Olympics this, this, uh, last Olympics, right? A couple of weeks ago. Um, she, her last day here, she was, uh, it's the first time I've ever, ever had a golfer go to the Olympics. So that was, it was fun. Um, but nice. her last day, yeah, her last day training with me, she said a lot of the athletes there are saying that the course is very tough and she's very good at this mindset stuff. And, uh, tough is a perception, tough is right. a perception. It's just a course, right? So we looked at each other and 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 we, you know, we kind of smiled and we said, that's great. Their perceptions, it's hard. Guess what our perception is? It's easy. It's just another uh -huh. course. Your perception's wrong 50% of the time. So shape it the way you want it to be. If you're going to be wrong, make it easy. Don't make it tough. Uh, you know, so we we don't allow perception to affect our lives. So another example would be, um, if, uh, uh, say some of the track, I have a lot of track, 100, 240 meter track runners. Um, let's say they, that someone would say, oh, today was a hard training session. No, it was a training session. Okay. Do you want it to be hard? Do you want your mind to believe it's hard? Do you want your body to believe it's hard? Um, we nitpick everything. It matters. So what you tell yourself based on your perception affects how you perform. It affects how, how you perceive the day. Um, you know, all that. So the very first thing we, one of the first things we deal with is perception. Uh, and that can be difficult for some people. They're so used to saying, um, well, getting up at 5 a.m. is early. Is it early? Who says it's early? There's people that get up at 3 a.m. Is 5 a.m. early or is 3 a.m. early? That's perception. Uh, so we get rid of perception. Everything just is. 5 a.m. is 5 a.m. Practice is practice. There is no hard. There is no early. There is no long. There is no short. Yeah, that's really challenging, Chase, for a lot of people because uh, we are so uh, almost conditioned to think that there's a reason for things happening when there's probably millions, if not infinite reasons that you could uh, you could label for something to occur. But ultimately, it just is. It's it's how you hold it. Right. And they we're talking perception. So so breaking away the perception and not putting labels of whether it's positive or negative or anything else, just going, hey, I'm just walking through it. I don't have to claim it for this or that. It just is. Brilliant. Love it. Everything just is. 
And then someone would say, well, okay, then what is real? And, and that's when we get into the, um, really there's two reels and there's a few others in between, but for the most part, we can say what's real. Real number one is you were born. Okay, that's real. We know that's real. Number two is you're going to die. Okay, that's real. Every man is destined to die once, right? So you're at least on, on this earth, right? Um, so you're, you're, those are our realities. Everything else in the middle is made up. So, and I would even use the example like, does green mean go? No, green is green, right? Does red mean stop? No, red is red. Like, does the paper dollar bills that we pay money with mean anything other than we've agreed to that? Uh, no, it's all made up. Everything is made up, which is fine. It's how we have order. Uh, but it's just important to know that as you're going through life, like <laughs> it's made up. Uh, so make it up for your advantage. And that's one of the things we teach the athletes, like make your life up in the way you want it to be, uh, not in the way that you don't want it to be. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So there's a level of acceptance that comes along with this, obviously, just uh, and and almost just um how would I say a, 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 a sloughing off of a layer that does not serve you. How about that? Like shedding yeah. a skin that somehow you created with the constructs that everybody else had that you adopted. Exactly. Exactly. God. It's all taught from the past. Everything you're told is taught from the past. My son, just to give you one more example, and then we can move on. My son, the other night, we were driving to soccer practice, and his coach is a great coach, a good coach, and he did the right thing. But he sent out a message, um, you know, have everybody bring plenty of water. It's hot out, right? And hot is a perception. Hot is a perception. And and we were driving, and I showed Thunder, you know, the text, because he's 12, but he understands this stuff like the back of his hand. But uh, we looked at the – it's Florida down here. We looked at the um, temperature deal on the truck, and it said 97 degrees, which – you know, anyone's perception would say, you know, it's hot. But uh, if we come into agreement with that, when he gets there, he's going to be like everyone else. And, oh, it's hot. It's too hot to be out here. This is wearing me down, right? We don't need that. All we need is that it's 97 degrees out. Bring some water. We don't need the perception that it's hot. And when I showed that to my son, those 12, he said something that I thought was really funny. And I liked it, even though it's not scientifically sound. He goes, he goes, well, it's not that hot. It's not even hot, even not as hot as my body temperature, 98.6. This isn't hot enough to make me any hotter. <laughs> so <laughs> nice, nice. Kid. So he, That's good. Yeah. So even though it's not scientifically sound, the truth is, is he made it look not hot. So that's what I teach the athletes. I teach them if it's a perception, make it look opposite of what would hinder you. Right. Uh, that way you can have some buy in. Yeah. 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 So being literal. Uh, rather than descriptive mm. is is kind of the key and just like you say it's it's 97 degrees that is just how we measure this and how we make sense of it but we don't have to attach adjectives to these events or or um, episodes so you right. do that with your athletes too we're not going to we're not going to necessarily uh, apply adjectives we're just going to take it as it is Yep. Unless you want to apply an adjective to turn it in your favor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Brilliant. Yep. Yep. Uh, what well, else? Um, what, what's the hardest thing that I, well, wait, let me try and rephrase this. There is usually things that people have in common. What are the, the challenges that are common aside from what we've just mentioned are there other things that you almost smile at going oh there it is okay let's see if we can't <laughs> iron out the details on this one. Oh yeah yeah two two big ones um words and belief systems um words that are used commonly that destroy dreams um mm. you are respond life and death are in the tongue Okay, life and death are in the tongue. You can kill your dreams or you can create your dreams based on what comes out of your mouth. Um, I tell the athletes, you're responsible. This is exactly the way I say it. You are responsible for everything that falls out of your mouth. Meaning like if you're just spewing stuff, uh, you're responsible. You're going to be held responsible. Uh, that's when the laws kick in, the law of attraction, vibration, all that. And obviously this podcast, we don't have time to go into all that, but we can talk about words. Um, you are going to be held responsible for whatever you say. 
So there's a list of, um, I think I, I have it pretty much narrowed down to nine to 10 words that we say we don't get to say. Um, and I can give you a few of those because these are words, like you said, aha, there it is. Um, it is so common for people to say these words without realizing they're actually really hurting themselves, like really hurting themselves. Um, obviously, everyone knows the word can't. We don't need to go into that, right? You can't, you won't. I mean, everybody knows that. I don't even count that as one of our words because it's not really hidden. Um, but uh, a hidden word that we would use would be the word try. Um, we know, again, based on um, analysis and meta analysis, you know, all the studies and what they've done with psychology that um, 95% of the time you use the word try, 95% of the time you, was, you use the word try, you won't accomplish what you want to accomplish. Um, so there's that 5% that get away with it. Uh, but 95% of the time you've set yourself up not to succeed. And uh, I, I believe there's two reasons why people use the word try when it comes to, um, you know, athletics, working with athletes, that kind of thing. Number one, um, they don't want to do what's being asked of them right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, go do this. Okay. I'll, you know, I'll try, you know, they they don't have that, right. They don't have that fire behind them, which isn't good. Uh, or number two, um, they don't believe they can. If I say, you know, go hit that lift. Okay. I'll try. Th there's disbelief there, which is equally as bad. Um, so when you use the word try, whether it's because you don't want to, which is a bad thing or, uh, or not a good thing, or you, uh, don't think you can, then your belief system's not where it should be. So um, the word try uh, definitely is a poisonous word. So if I were to ask you, oh, go ahead. Well, I was, no, you go ahead and then I'll ask okay. you a question. Yeah. If I were to ask you even, um, hey, I'm this weekend I'm moving. Uh, can you come help me uh, move at 8 a.m.? And you say, I'll try, you know, I'll, I'll see what I can do. There's a 95% chance we know based on studies that you won't be there if you say no i'll be there you can count on me you're going to be there right uh it's the same thing with athletics if if an athlete or any person ever uses the word try uh chances are that they're not going to come through yeah yeah I, I was just going to try and see if i could guess another one of the words that are nine <laughs> or ten and that would be should should yep that's one of them all right yep. there you go yeah, so that is, yeah. it's along the same lines as try. It's just I oh I should do this. It, it's just something that you're it's in your mind, but you're not really committed to it, or else you would use I the word must. It's a completely um, different change. Or it is, I it, will. Yeah, well, that's the big one. Um, that's going the opposite way. Correct. Um, uh, should and must, believe it or not, are very similar. Um, How so? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Um, so when you say I should do something, uh, what you did was you gave your power away. Okay. When I mm -hmm. say I, when I say, or must even, when I say I should go to the gym at three o'clock, who's in control now? The gym. You gave uh -huh. your power, you gave your power away. You said, now the gym is controlling me. The gym is forcing me to go at three o'clock to it. Um, mm. I should, I should get up at 5 a.m. Well, now you, you gave your power away. You're saying it has control over me. I don't have control. It's it's for it makes me feel like I should. Does that make sense? Yes, um, it does. And 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 so does could. Okay, should and could. Uh, uh, you know, um, anything like that. So you're you're saying you're just saying basically. I, I don't want to ramble too much. I just want to make sure I'm clear. You're just saying um, like even if I, I you know I get off work, well I should go mow the lawn. Well now the lawn's in control. I'm no longer in control. It's in control of me, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's where, that's where must would be the same way. Uh, yeah. So it, it, when you give away your, when you give away your power, uh, you're, you're letting something else be above you telling you what to do, which we don't live life. We don't want to live life like that. We want to tell, we want to do it. So you've got kind of life sucking words, kind of things that drain your power that pull it off of you. But then mm -hmm. on in inversely, you have powerful words things that mm -hmm. empower that get you closer where you want to go i'm imagining oh, yeah. is that correct oh yeah oh yeah 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 power words big time um you take yeah you take your power back um and that's when instead of saying i should like you you already nailed it you you know you would say i will uh, there's actually four different levels of these words uh, of power words and they get stronger uh, as you move up in them uh, and how they how they pull things into you and how they give you your power back. 
Um, definitely, I will is strong. Um, I want, I want is strong. Remember how I pointed at the TV and said, I want to train that guy. Um, wanting is powerful because it points you in the direction that you want to go. So if instead of saying, um, I should go to the gym at three o'clock and say, I want to go to the gym at three o'clock, you can hear that difference, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So do you make a, do you make a contract? Do you make a, some type of like promise keeper with your athletes and clients that, uh, and, and not to be sarcastic in any way, because I respect your beliefs and anything, but kind of a thou shalt not use these words or how does it, how do you encourage them to avoid using the words that sabotage their, their goals in their life? Yeah. Uh, it's quite simple, really. I explain it to them like I'm doing to you. I mean, a little more in depth. We have a whole, you know, workbook I run them through and systems that we run them through. Um, and then, uh, to be honest, by the end of it, they understand it so clearly on why I teach the why, um, why we do what we do. Um, and then they actually, we train the subconscious mind to start catching themselves saying it every time the word try, for example, um, initially when that comes up, we'll just say little verbal, like outwardly, like, whoa, like whenever that word pops up, whenever you say the word, try, I want you to say the word, whoa, just out loud, because then every time it does that, the subconscious mind is going to be listening for it. Mm. And then you said, you know, I'm going to try to go, whoa. Okay. And then you do that for a couple of weeks and then that word disappears. And then you move on to the next word that you, everyone kind of, uh, you know, has different words that affects them the most. Um, so, you know, you start with one word, I don't expect you to do them all at the same time, but you start with okay. one and then you pick the one. And then whenever you say it, just verbally out loud, you say, whoa, that way the brain will start paying attention. And then after a couple of weeks, normally that word's gone. And then we move on to the next word. But to answer your question, by the time they go through the system, like they're so bought in, um, because they understand it, it's not me just making thou shalt not, it's me explaining why it works and why what's going on when you do this how the laws work how does this work that they're so bought in that um they want they want to do it right it's no longer a me telling them if that makes sense uh it does make sense and uh, and you mentioned uh vibration and mm -hmm. frequency and so on and and that's something that is instantaneous as soon mm -hmm. as you create an action or use words you're using energy that has vibration and so on so mm. I, I say that because i can anticipate that change can occur in the speed with which that vibration travels and so oh, yeah. it is something that can occur right from the beginning of working with these clients it doesn't necessarily take um Four to six weeks of hypertrophy, shall we say, four mm. to six weeks of practice before things began to materialize. It, is that out of the question to expect? No. Most of the time we get through the whole system in about seven weeks. And by the end of that seven weeks, they're I have I don't I don't want to use the word brainwash, but by the end of the system, you know that you can accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish. Like, you know, there's an understanding. There's such a deep understanding. And and so you're correct. It doesn't take months and months and months. We've had athletes come from other camps that are good camps, like um, really good, I meaning track and field camps, right? They'll, they'll come to our camp and that kind of thing. We had one athlete come uh, that wasn't performing. He had a three-year contract with a big, you know, shoe company. He was, he'd, he'd had it cut in half already. He was about to lose it if he didn't perform. Uh, uh -huh. He was with, he was with us six months. Okay. Six months. Not, I mean, long enough to make some changes, but more mental than physical. Right. Yeah. And in that six months, he broke his national record. He ran in the world championships and got a medal in the, in, in the 400. I won't give up too much. Uh, in the 400 meters in six months, he did all that from almost losing a contract to, to breaking his national record six months. And, wow. and this other camp is a good camp. I'm not putting that other camp down. I mean, do I believe our systems are better? Of course I'm going to be biased, but what does it come down to the mind? 
what's possible? What do you believe? How do we reshape your mindset? That other camp wasn't a good mental fit for him. When we can reshape your belief system and what's possible for you, everything changes. Everything. Okay, so I'm curious with belief systems, we have many different belief systems out there from mm -hmm. monotheistic to multi-theistic to, to atheistic, I guess. You know, there's so many individuals that have so many, I uh, would come to, again, use the word construct in how they perceive the world around them based mm -hmm. on past teachings of those that influence their, their growth and their development. So mm -hmm. do you maintain exclusivity within say the Christian kingdom or can you work with people oh, of yeah. varying belief systems and how oh, does yeah, that yeah. look? Oh yeah. No, it's, it's a blend. Uh, I don't, I don't push my beliefs on anybody. It's how I learned it. So that's how I share it. Um, but mm -hmm. does, does gravity work on everybody? Yes. Yeah. Do the law, do the laws and what the scripture says work for everybody? Yes, it's no respecter of persons. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what color of skin you are. I don't care if you're male or you're female. I don't care. I, I, I just don't. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so, and, and gravity doesn't care either, right? And that's the exact same way with these laws and these principles. Um, whether or not you believe how they are working or not really doesn't matter. It, it just, if you apply them, they're going to work every time. So, to answer your question, your belief system doesn't doesn't affect uh, how it works. Not every athlete of the 30 that I've had medal uh, believe the exact same way I do, but it doesn't matter. If they apply the principles and the laws, they're going to get the same results that everybody else gets. So it just happens to be the way that I learned them and, and how I believe they all blend together. And be, me being authentic, I think it's important for me to share how I learned them and how I see how that they work. Uh, but I, that's not a requirement to get the results. Absolutely not. No, they work for everybody all the time, everywhere. Uh, there's no respect or persons in that. Yeah. And it, thank you. That's great to know. What about, is there a hierarchical kind of process? Like, do you, I imagine you're starting with uh, some basic fundamental aspects of, of, of setting your mind right, of mm -hmm. of goal setting and so on, and that there is a almost a pyramiding, a scaffolding, if you will, to get you to the next level and the one after that. Uh, it, how long does it take? I know it varies from person to person, I imagine, but what's the average process? How the length of time that you get somebody work with till you get them to all through the work itself it, it ranges um if they've got the time commitment of two hours a week to like sit down and do the work we can generally knock it out in seven weeks six to seven weeks now some athletes will do an hour a week so it'll take you know 14 to 15 weeks but um if if we have two hour time blocks like once a week uh meaning a total of 14 hours uh we can knock it out uh, but that's in, that includes assignments and everything. I do have them do homework. It's like I said, the writing assignment. I kind of shared that. Um, there, there's of the thir thirty-three lessons. There's twenty assignments, uh, and and that means you take an action, right? It won't. It's just like training. If if you don't strength training, if you don't perform it and to get stronger, you're not going to get stronger. That's the same with this. Um, it's very like you said. It's very specific. I I tell the athletes it's the same periodization cycle as strength training. You have these phases, and if you skip strength phase, your power phase isn't going to be very good, right? And that's the same with that's the same with this. If you skip a phase, um, you're, you're, you'll still get results, but they're not going to be, you know, gold medal results probably. Uh, so you're right. There every is day, every day a week, every every day of the week, or do you have a rest day just like other periodized programs? For the for the mental aspect, yes. Okay. No, it would be, we'd only meet once a week. Yeah. And then they would do the assignment the following that whole week. I give them a week to do the assignment because uh, we don't rush. Uh, so generally speaking, we can knock out four to five lessons in a two hour, uh, a two hour window. Um, so oh. we'll, we'll knock out four or five lessons. We'll go through it, answer any questions. They have a whole week to do whatever assignments were in those four or five lessons. 
and then uh, we go again the, the next week. Yeah, so it's only one day a week. Yeah, about two hours. Uh, and then they have a whole week to do the assignments because the assignments are ultimately what gets the results. It's the training, right, in the weight room that gets the results. You can't just learn about the cycles and not do it. So that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. And mm -hmm. how how many how many athletes do you do you work with on average? Are you working with teams, individuals? I know track and field is a big part of uh, your your client load, but yep. How does it work? Um, it, it, it depends. Like, so I have a lot of LPGA girls and, um, you know, wakeboarders, water skiers was a big thing that I dealt with more in the past, but a lot of track, um, it's, it's really 50, 50. I have one-on-ones, um, the people that want that. And then some of my track groups, um, some of them are, um, up and comers, meaning they don't have contracts yet. So it's easier for them to, you know, do a semi-private more, you know, five to six at a time. Uh, so normally my mornings are one-on-ones and my afternoons are small, semi-private groups. Yeah. That's kind of how we, we break it up. And so for those that are interested in working with you, you do work virtually as well as in person. Uh, yeah. So I do, um, I do do some virtual, um, if you're, if you're looking at, uh, if you're talking mindset stuff, I actually have recordings of, of, um, exactly how I stand in front of the athletes with the whiteboard and I teach the exact process and program. Uh, that way we don't have to schedule meetings. And I actually have that as a program now uh, where people, if they really want it, they can, they can go through the whole system. All I ask is that if you do, um, uh, that you do every assignment, you print off the PDFs, you write down when it says to write down. Uh, I, I would prefer you not do it if you're not going to do everything because uh, it won't work if you don't do it. But if you're serious and you want the results of what you want and you want to learn it as a coach or that kind of thing, um, I recommend doing it. I've, I've had a lot of feedback uh, that people love it and it works. I mean, it's laws. It's, it's not my name on it. I didn't create it. I just figured out the system. <laughs> that is fabulous, Chase. I love it. And so if people want more information, this would be a great time to just kind of give us a little bit of uh, links and info on yeah. how to tap into it. Yeah, if you want to actually look at the program itself, it's www.thegoatmind.com. So www.thegoatmind.com. So the greatest of all time mind.com. And, and on that, there's, um, there's 140 uh, PDF pages that you'd print off. Each lesson has a couple, so you're not printing them off all at once. But uh, it's, um, it's uh, let's see, I've got it's about six to seven hours of recordings. It's me standing in front of a whiteboard and uh, a screen and i literally walk you through it the exact same way i do the athletes um and uh except for they would have a workbook that i hand them uh but you can print it off it's the exact same workbook it's 140 pages okay it's about six and a half hours of lessons um it has five audios with it so these audios are going to walk you through the mindset portion um those audios are worth are with certain assignments so you'll know when to do them okay uh, it's all in order for you it's very simple uh, I would just ask that if you do it, I would, uh, I would love you to follow it hundred percent and, uh, enjoy it because it's really fun. It's very powerful. Uh, again, I, I scare, I do share scripture. I do share the universal laws and I do share the science. Uh, you know, if, if any of those don't agree with you, that's fine. The laws still work the same way, <laughs> but just, uh, do the assignments because you're going to be amazed. It's amazing. And if, if people are in the Florida area, where are you located? Uh, Claremont, Florida. So I'm about 15 minutes outside of Orlando. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any kind of aspirations to work uh, more within the professional sports world or how do you, aside from obviously being on the podcast here and, and uh, having this conversation with me, which I have thoroughly enjoyed by the way, um, me too. Thank how, do, how do you, yeah, of course, how do you, how do you spread, how do you spread the love? What are your, your, your ideas moving forward? Uh, you know, um, to be honest, podcasts like this, I have a couple others that I, to be honest, I just launched this for everybody, uh, you know, about a month ago. I, I really kept this not, I don't, I don't want to say this the wrong way, but this is the secret sauce, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. For the past 10 years, we've gotten medals beyond medals from following this stuff. And it's kind of what separated me. There's a lot of great strength coaches out there. Um, great, great ones. Uh, and this is the secret sauce. Uh, and this is the first time that I'm, you know, giving it away, so to speak. And I'm excited about it. I'm at a new phase in my life. 
Uh, so really, it's just things like this to answer your question. Things like this, just tell people, share with people. I've uh, shared it with my network in the industry, and uh, I'm ready for everybody to to live their best life. And uh, and I've always wanted that, but you know, it was more just a tighter circle at the time. But now I'm ready to just share it. Let's get everybody out there and uh, open it up. Okay, and just give me uh, two more items on your list aside from sharing this and not to get too personal, but I'm just curious, what other aspirations do you have that you're, you're going to achieve? Okay. Um, well, I'm going to create a, um, uh, we're on property now, but my wife and I want to get a little bit more uh, to where I can create a, a goat mind campus where we bring people in and we, uh, we teach them for a day or two uh, all about this, you know, at a, at a higher level. Um, just so people can really understand the the power of the mind. I, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but you can live your greatest dreams. You really can. It's just, I don't feel like people know how, uh, everybody tells everybody, uh, you know, you can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do, which is true, but nobody teaches the process. Nobody teaches the process. They just tell them that that's blank words and, and which is fine for encouragement, but you need to give the process. I, I believe um, and that's what this is. That's what this is. And I, I want it. So I want to create a place where people can come for a day or two, um, or where we teach them deeply like this and we change their lives. And then of course, things like this, uh, I'm really shifting my career focus. I'm, I'm still working with the athletes still had some, several go to Paris this year. I'm still have more coming next year. I'm not stopping that. Uh, but, but I'm ready to, I'm ready to change the, my career, my career, really, to be honest, time to get this going time to help people. Well, there's no better time than the present. That is fabulous. <laughs> I'm, I'm really I'm so grateful that you, you were in Orlando and you, you stepped up and you reached out your hand and we got a, a moment to chat a little bit more in depth about this, this path that we're both very passionate about. Yes. And, and uh, the, the way that you have, formulated a plan, taken the truths, if you will, and place them together to create a process. I mean, wow, my hat's off. I'm, I'm very appreciative and humbled by it. So thank you for well, that. Well, thank you. I'm appreciative of you. I came up and you were more than willing to sit down with me and lend an ear. And uh, that I appreciate it. That's why we're here. And uh, I, I really do. I appreciate what yeah. you do. I appreciate, appreciate you speaking and sharing everything you shared. I mean, it was a blessing that day, and I'm I'm glad we're I'm glad we're here right now. Well, we're we're talking on the same frequency, I think, because that's, there's that's so exactly. many people, right, that have that that have blocks, and uh, just the whole eat right exercise, and expect that to be the answer when there's the other things that we weren't taught that get mm. in the way of making that a reality. So, yeah, I I love this topic. I I could talk for. For hours and hours with you about this. In fact, let's do that. Let's in so many months down the road, let's revisit this and see how much closer the campus is coming. Because oh, yeah. I imagine, I can imagine that there's property that's going to to uh, become in your awareness and oh, yeah. opportunity knocks and, and you have a way of opening that door. So Chase, this has been great. I can't thank you enough for your time. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you for giving me your time. That brings this episode of the Zealous Podcast to a close. Thank you, Chase, for coming on and explaining all about the goat mind. Now, if you're thinking uh, this is what I want to do, check the descriptions below to find out more information on how to connect with Chase and the goat mind. Also, while you're online, check out my website, rockysnyder.com, for continuing education like the workshop coming up November 3rd, Posture-Based Soft Tissue Mobilization in Capitola, California. And don't forget Satanta College, satantacollege.com. Enter RS10 for 10% off tuition today. We'll see you next week.